That's very good. I don't want to shift the panel into a better position, but besides that minor technicality, you worked that out very well. Now, you saw that we have to identify which of these is going to be acting as the enolate and which is going to be acting as the electrophile. Well, you knew this would have to be the enolate because this doesn't have any alpha hydrogens. Uh, this benzene carbon doesn't have any alpha hydrogens. So you label this as the alpha carbon. I would also put the asterisks here then to remind myself that this is going to be the electrophile. I'm not going to put asterisks here because this is not acting like an electrophile. And then I'm going to use this as my basic model. So maybe I'll just start by redrawing the electrophile. We've just redrawn the electrophile. Well, we know that we're simply going to remove the L group and replace it with the nucleophile. Well, this is the L group right here, so I'll erase the L group. And who's the nucleophile? It's our alpha carbon, also what you call the number two carbon. So again, it's really good that you're using all these numbers. And then we just have to be careful and ask, who's the, who's the number two attached to? Well, it's attached to the number one, three, and attached to the number three ester group. So the numbers, as usual, help us to make sure that we're not adding or dropping carbons. That's a really good habit. So we really have to follow this pattern of simply erasing this L group and replacing it with this nucleophile over okay. here. Well, that's certainly a lot faster than going through the whole mechanism. So it's important to be able to see how to do that. Okay. Now we know that after step one, this will actually be deprotonated. Mm -hmm. But then after step two, it'll be protonated again. So this is our final product. But remember, if you're doing a, a synthesis with the Clayson condensation, don't forget to add the aqueous acid as okay. a second step. Otherwise, you won't really get what you're probably going for. All right, that's good. And I do think it's helpful to put in the alpha label and these asterisks to help us keep our bearings. Now, how did we know that this would be the nucleophile? Because it's the only one with alpha hydrogens. There's another issue, though. Even though this is going to deprotonate, only some of these will deprotonate. So how do we know that this can't also act like an electrophile? How do we know that when this deprotonates, it's only going to attack this compound and not this compound? Well, the best way to ensure that is to put this compound in excess. Mm -hmm. That way, anytime we form one of these enolates, who's the first thing that it's going to bump into? Well, the first thing it's going to bump into is not one of these rare molecules over here, but one of these that are in excess. So this is another trick for making the cross clayson condensation work. The trick is to make one of the molecules have no alpha hydrogens so that it can't form enolates, and put it in excess. So that when you do form the enolate, the enolate will usually bump into this compound before it bumps into another version of this compound. The ester with no alpha hydrogens is generally used in excess. That's what we showed here. Let's show the product here, and again, we'll just try to jump straight to the final product uh, okay. doing the whole mechanism. fast. Looks good. We know this has to be the alpha carbon that forms the enolate because this alpha carbon has no protons. So this gets the asterisks. So I'll start by redrawing it. Maybe 
it would be good just to put in pH here so we don't have as much baggage carried around. Now, this is going to lose its L group, and instead of being attached to the L group, it's going to be attached to the number 2, or alpha carbon. And who's the alpha carbon attached to? Well, it's attached to the phenyl group. This is the number 3 carbon, and it's attached to the number 1 ester group. Once again, it would be very easy without the numbers to add or drop carbons, but it looks like you got that exactly right. That's good. Yeah, you gave me a lot of good, good tricks. Good, good. Notice, as usual, we're trying to use a base that matches our leading group, so there's no competition. I forgot to mention that in the previous problem, but if you go back to the previous problem, you'll, you might have seen that in the previous problem, we were using methyl esters. In the previous problem, we were using methyl esters, so then as a base, we didn't use F oxide, we used methoxide. So you generally want to use a base that matches your leading group, so there won't be any competition. When would we use this in the synthesis again? When we're trying to make a beta carbonyl ester or a 1,3 dicarbonyl. Let's draw the product from this reaction. And like we were doing last time, we'll, we'll, we'll skip the mechanism. Let's try to just go straight to the single product. We're going to do another Clayson condensation. We can pick one molecule to have the nucleophilic alpha carbon and one to be the electrophile. So here's the electrophile. Well, we know that in the Clayson condensation, the electrophile is going to lose its leading group, and that's going to be replaced by this nucleophile. And here's the alpha carbon connected to. Well, on one side, the alpha carbon is connected to a methyl group, and on the other side, it's connected to the carbonyl. So that's what you got. That's good. And what could we call this? <coughs> well, we could call it a beta carbonyl ester, or a 1,3 dicarbonyl. That's what we talked about last time. Now, the next topic is Clayson condensation as a route to ketones. Okay. Clayson condensation as a route to ketones. Now, first, it might seem hard to understand how that's going to work because we don't have exactly a ketone here. So we want to ask, how can we make this into a ketone? Um. So let's see here. So our basic approach is going to be uh, let's see, what ketone are we going to try to get? Well, in order to make this just a ketone, actually it is a ketone, but it's also an ester. And what we want to do is get, make it just a ketone by getting rid of this ester group. We want to get rid of the ester carbon. So we're only going to, we're going to get rid of this carbon, we're going to try to save everything else. So we have to think of some way to get rid of this. Uh, Decarboxylation? That's a very good, that's a very good insight. That's right. Uh, because one good thing about decarboxylation is it would just take off this one carbon, and it does cleave carbon-carbon sigma bonds. We don't know many ways to do that. Now, there's one difficulty, which is that this isn't ready for decarboxylation yet. For one thing, it doesn't have a carboxyl group. So, but we actually know good ways to make this into a carboxyl group. How can we make this into a carboxyl group? Add water. That's right. Now, that would be, what, what's the name of that type of reaction? Uh, hydrolysis. 
hydrolysis. That's right. So we could do either acid or base catalyzed hydrolysis. 